go, thank you, to Dr. Thomas Mungibi. He's going to talk about aortic dissection. Thanks, Faisal. So just for a short hands, how many uh, cardiology fellows? Wow. How many are cardiac surgery fellows? How many are anesthesia residents or fellows? Way in the back? No. Oh, right there. Okay. Great. So I'm going to uh, talk about uh, aortic dissection. And it's been known for a long time that diseases of the aorta are really uh, really a problem. Uh, William Osler, who was ironically considered to be the father of modern medicine, noted that uh, it's a source of great humility to take care of patients with aortic disease. And I would say that aortic dissection is right there on the top of the list. Uh, surprisingly, it's, it's the most common catastrophe of the human aorta, aortic dissection. It occurs about two to three times more commonly than a ruptured abdominal aortic aneurysm. And in fact, that's probably an underrepresentation of how common it is. There are a number of patients who die from aortic dissection. They get sudden chest pain, they collapse, and they're not resuscitatable. So how, how do you think they get listed on the death certificate? They get listed as having an MI and dying. But if you look at some autopsy series, that story, if you do an autopsy on them, um, about 20 to 30 percent of them will actually have uh, an acute type A aortic dissection. So uh, the incidence is under-reported, uh, I think. It's a life-threatening condition. It should be, uh, I would recommend that uh, in your taking care of these patients, it should feel like you have a hand grenade with the pin out in your hand. You need to deal with it as quickly as possible. Uh, patients with acute, acute type A aortic dissections, um, they can die while they're waiting for a scan. They can die while they're waiting for an echo. They can die while they're waiting to go up to the operating room. So, uh, and so the, the rule of thumb is that their mortality rate goes up one to two percent every hour for an acute type A aortic dissection. So their survival is very dependent upon uh, prompt and accurate diagnosis and prompt therapy. Uh, What's, what's the way people with aortic dissections present? Anybody? Chest pain? Yeah, chest pain, back pain. How does it differ from somebody having an MI? Yeah, so, you, so, so patients with MIs are sort of angina. It's sort of, well, it's a tightness, it's a pressure, it's yeah, kind of a sensation I have. Patients with aortic dissections classically have this sudden, tearing, ripping, awful pain. It's almost as if they're histrionic in their description of it, as opposed to oftentimes coronary pain is a little bit more, more vague. Uh, about 10% or 15% of people can have an acute type A aortic dissection without symptoms. Uh, they can have no pain, uh, going back to Dr. Osler's uh, statement. The aorta, that's the biggest blood vessel in the body. Uh, the, uh, how do I, uh, oh, here we go. The, um, so it's made up of different components, the aortic root. Uh, that's where the coronaries and the valve is seated, the tubular or ascending portion. The aortic arch, where the vessels to the head and the uh, upper extremities arise. And the descending thoracic aorta starts dis distal to the subclavian. And the descending aorta stops where the celiac artery uh, originates uh, down below the level of the diaphragm. Uh, who gets aortic dissections? Uh, used to be thought it was sort of a random, spontaneous event. Well, as we're learning more and more that people with normal aortas don't get dissections, uh, we've appreciated there are some chromosomal abnormalities. Marfan syndrome, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, Lois Dietz syndrome. Uh, there's increasing appreciation of patients who have bicuspid uh, aortic valve. Uh, patients, uh, there are familial aortic syndromes. Uh, patients who have degenerative diseases of their aorta, aortic aneurysms, uh, are prone to develop dissections. Uh, the most common uh, associated uh, problem, hypertension. And 
I would suggest, or at least uh, the thought is that, is it the hypertension that causes the dissection, or is there some underlying problem in the aorta that causes the patient to have hypertension? Uh, some, you know, if you look at patients histologically with dissections, the vast majority of them have a medial degeneration uh, in, their, uh, in their walls. Uh, so patients that come in, uh, you want to have a high index of suspicion. In patients who have sudden acute chest or back pain or abdominal pain, uh, on uh, physical examination, again, I would say there's still a place for physical examination in the care of uh, patients. Uh, asymmetric uh, blood pressures or pulses. Uh, somebody who has a new diastolic murmur. Uh, there are all different types of malperfusion syndromes that can cause strokes. Uh, Every you know, few times a year we get called, somebody who's uh, uh, in the CT scanner with an acute stroke actually has a cause from aortic dissection. Acute syncope is not an uncommon presentation for uh, acute aortic dissection. Malperfusion syndrome to the coronary arteries causing an MI, um, uh, very, uh, very common. And uh, occasionally they're picked up incidentally for other workups on CT scans or TEE. There are several classification systems. Uh, here at Methodist, we like to use the DeBakey classification system. Type 1 dissection um, is, uh, involves the ascending aorta uh, all the way around to the descending aorta. Type 2 involves just the ascending aorta. And type 3 does not involve the ascending aorta. So if it involves the arch and the descending aorta, that's a type 3. Okay, if it, uh, so uh, a more simplistic way, uh, uh, the Stanford uh, uh, system, type A, type B, uh, if it involves the ascending aorta in any way, it's a type A. If it does not involve the ascending aorta, it's a type B. And uh, what's more common, type A or type B? Who agrees type A? Who believes type B? Your best review. So type A's are about uh, twice as common as type B. Uh, so uh, most uh, common way now to diagnose them is on CT scan. See a classic uh, septum uh, within, the, uh, within a contrast CT. Uh, a common reason for uh, con uh, confusion is an intramural hematoma uh, where you don't have flow within the false lumen. Um, there used to be discussion and controversy about how to manage them. So type A intramural hematomas are treated the same way as type A dissections. Type B intramural hematomas are treated the same way as type B aortic dissections um, from a practical point of view. This is a TEE of a patient who uh, developed an intraoperative acute type A aortic dissection. Uh, the benefit of a TEE is you can get a lot more, you can get a lot of information about the function of the heart and the coronaries uh, uh, and, the, uh, and, the, and the root. How do you manage them uh, initially? The ABCs, uh, airway, breathing, circulation. We recommend if you have an uh, index of suspicion, put in invasive uh, hemodynamic monitoring to measure their uh, blood pressure. Uh, Please uh, make sure you examine all their extremities. You want to put the arterial line in. Uh, if there is a malperfusion syndrome, you want to measure the highest blood pressure. Uh, the goal of therapy is anti-impulse therapy. It's not necessarily to lower the blood pressure. So if you give a vasodilator like nitroprusside uh, or hydralazine, that even though the blood pressure goes down, you increase the shear forces. You want anti-impulse therapy. So beta blockade, uh, calcium channel blockers. And once patients are adequately beta blocked, you can um, give uh, vasodilators. Be careful uh, in uh, patients. The most common cause of death uh, in patients who have an acute dissection is severe aortic regurgitation. So you don't want to slow their heart rate down if you have significant aortic regurgitation or tamponade. Uh, for patients who have an acute type A or a complicated type B, it's uh, some kind of surgical intervention. Uh, and for patients, still the standard of care for uncomplicated type B aortic dissection is best medical therapy. So again, graphically speaking, this is from the IRAD database. 
for an acute type A aortic dissection. It's a race against the clock. As every hour goes by, the risk of death goes up significantly. Uh, uh, the goal of the surgical therapy for acute type A is to keep the patient from dying. You don't want to get fancy. You want to keep them from dying. Most of the causes of death occur from problems in the ascending aorta, whether it's from rupture and tamponade, malperfusion to the coronaries or the cerebral circulation, uh, or as I said, severe aortic insufficiency. The, so the, the treatment is to replace the ascending aorta. Uh, aortic regurgitation. Uh, oftentimes, that mechanism is not related to the aortic valve. It's from the dissection. So you can almost, you can very commonly, in the absence of organic uh, aortic valve disease, save patients' uh, aortic valves without, uh, without having to replace them. And there are a number of different procedures to do that. Uh, most of us uh, replace the uh, aorta using uh, cardiopulmonary bypass and deep hypothermia and circulatory arrest uh, to keep uh, from having a clamp on the aorta and causing uh, injury. Uh, type B aortic dissection, again, uh, occurring just distal to the subclavian. Their uh, biology is different from type A aortic dissections. Uh, in the 70s and 80s, we treated them the same with surgery, and we found out that open surgical repair was associated with a higher mortality than medical therapy. Uh, so uh, we, uh, we stopped doing uh, surgery on patients with uh, uncomplicated aortic dissection. Um, there has been, uh, with, with the advent of endovascular therapies, TVAR, uh, we've changed the nomenclature, and the management is dependent upon the timing and the presentation. So acute is anything under 14 days. Subacute is between 14 days and 90 days. Chronic is greater than 90 days. The presentation, uncomplicated, more common, complicated about 25% of the time. What's uncomplicated? Stable hemodynamics, not refractory hypertension, not hypotension. No malperfusion, pain is well controlled with medical therapy. Complicated, persistent pain, they, you can't get people comfortable. Uh, in, 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 and I mean, patients with dissections, as I said, have severe pain. Refractory hypertension, you can't get the blood pressure under control with three drugs. Uh, patients who have aneurysm dilatation, any kind of malperfusion syndrome, leak, or rupture. A lot of work with uh, TVAR, uh, and uh, that uh, role is uh, evolving. The potential benefits of uh, TVAR, uh, you can close the entry tear, redirect flow through the true lumen. Uh, you can remodel the aorta, hopefully, with increasing size of the true lumen, decreasing size of the false lumen. And it looks like with that remodeling, you can decrease the need for further intervention. Potential risks, retrograde type A aortic dissection, uh, change a potentially medically manageable problem into an acute life-threatening problem. Retrograde type A dissections have a very high incidence of death, and that incidence is probably underreportable, as you've probably um, come to appreciate in your medical career. People don't rush to the journals to report their complications. Uh, so if you look in the literature, the risk of retrograde type A is reported to be about 2%. It's actually closer to about 15 to 20%. Uh, so uh, the risk of paralysis acutely is high, about 12 to 15%. Uh, uh, and the risk of stent-induced new entry tears, which can exacerbate the problem, goes up. So, so the, the, at least right now, the treatment of uncomplicated type B aortic dissections is best medical therapy. So in summary, uh, a lot of good things. Uh, uh, hopefully uh, we can make the treatment of aortic disease less humbling. Uh, acute type A, surgical emergency. Type B, uh, best medical therapy, unless there's, uh, it's a complicated um, uh, type B. And uh, these, these patients require um, close monitoring with imaging and uh, clinical assessment uh, over time. So with that, thanks very much.